How you guys doing? It's your boy Cheap Ludes. We got new NBA 2K content and 2K news today. Look, I'm really interested. You guys like my easy voice? I'm trying to work on my news anchor voice because people tell me I sound like I'm on too much mids most of the time. Too many would be more accurate. So I'm trying to work on my uh, teleprompter voice, for lack of a better term. So we got uh, basically new content coming to NBA 2K22, my team, in the form of the same stuff I reported on the other day. So we're, we are getting a Flash 3 set. That is accurate, but in addition to that, we're getting the beginning of the NBA 75. So they're doing six decades, six different collections, right? At the end of each collection for each decade, which obviously is going to be like what, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s. No, so 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s. That's, that's all six, right? So at the end of each of those collections, there will actually be voting for who the collection reward is going to be, which means these cards are about to be so expensive, dude. Um, like an absurd level of expensive. I can't even explain. If you guys remember like lock-in cards from last year, like this is about to be so pricey. Tomorrow we got the first two of those cards. Those cards being John Havlicek and David Robinson. If you guys have seen the card art, honestly, pretty stoked about it. Something that I touched on in a video I did a while ago, like what can 2K learn from MLB the show to improve my team? Uh, I talked about how it'd be really cool if they started using old basketball cards as like the card art, or at least model them after like older basketball cards, and as opposed to what they've been doing for the last couple of years, where it's basically just like not even really a basketball card anymore at that point. Like it's something completely different. And they actually started doing that for the NBA 75 cards, which is huge. Absolutely huge. What they're going to do for the 50s is they're just going to loop all the 50s guys into the 60s. The 60s is basically just going to be like 60s and like earlier, basically. So anyone from like the 50s is just going to be looped into the 60s packs. Um, like there's some of this, uh, like some of the collections we're going to be able to guess who the lock in is before the fan voting even takes place. Like <laughs> realistically, right? Uh, so, I mean, I'm guessing they're going to be premium, right? Probably. Or they're going to be event cards. I'm not really sure what they're going to be, but they're probably going to be premium and each one will have, you know, its own mystery player. Like if we're looking at it, the 60s one, if they don't drop a Terry Dissinger is going to be Terry Dissinger because it's fan vote. You know, the player base is voting on these. So you have to assume who the player base is going to vote on. If it's the 60s, I would say high probability it's going to be Terry Dissinger, Right just based off of fan voting. I mean, what other 60s player are they going to vote for? Will Chamberlain, Bill Russell, or Terry Dissinger? Like, that's basically it. Look, I really don't think anybody's out here itching for, like, a Dark Matter Cliff Hagen or a Dark Matter... Uh... Who else? Dolph Shays at this point. You know what I mean? Or Kuzi. Yeah, no one cares about Kuzi. I would guess if it's fan voting... Dissinger probably is the one that's uh, going to be the one, unless they're only using a player pool of people who made the NBA 75 team, then maybe we could see. I'm not sure. As far as the 70s goes, honestly, it's probably Will Chamberlain or Dr. J would be my guess. I mean, maybe someone else enters the fray. I'm not really sure. Havlicek played in the 70s, I think. So maybe Havlicek, honestly. 80s, that could be anyone. You know, it's, I mean, the likely choices obviously would be like Bird, Magic, or Jordan, but it's honestly kind of tough to uh, really tell which one of those guys would win a fan vote. 90s, once again, like it's going to be tough. It's going to be a toss up between so many players because the 90s is easily the most, I wasn't going to say overhyped, but hype decade in all of 2K and really the NBA period. So any of the stars from the 90s could realistically make it in there. And it's a weird defining period. Like the difference between the NBA rosters in 92 and 98 is like astounding. So 2000s is Kobe. I don't care what anyone says. There is no possible way the 2000s one is not Kobe Bryant. 
if it's not Kobe Bryant, it'll either be LeBron or like T Mac or Dwayne Wade or something. Like that that's all I really gotta say there. 2010s. You know what? Controversial 2010s will be Taco Fall. Or Bull Bull. I not even kidding. Like, I'm dead serious. I think that the 2010 ones will be Taco Fall or Bull Bull is the lock in. If it's not, it's it's obviously going to be LeBron. They never put LeBron behind a lock-in, though. Like, they never do that. Kobe, they do. That's why I think Kobe's been behind both, like, a lock-in and grinds before. LeBron, he's a pack seller, dude. You don't put him behind... Or, like, 2K doesn't put him behind, like, you know, grinds or lock-ins or anything. Typically. Bull Bull, though, they love doing that. I Yeah, or it's Giannis, but I've never seen them put Giannis behind a lock-in. I mean, the only Giannis I can remember being even grindable was the one in 2K20. Um, Steph is also an option for 2010s. Yeah, I kind of forgot about him. It's it's fan-voted, so it's like the 2K player base is voting. So the meta around the time of the collection lock-ins is really going to determine exactly what we see. Um, that's why I think it's going to be Bull Bull or Taco Paul, personally. Like... Do I want that to be the case? No. <laughs> if the 90s one was Nino Raja, I'd be so hyped, dude. Or Murasan. I would be so stoked. But either way, let's review the cards we're actually getting tomorrow. I talked about them, obviously, you know, in the video and on the stream yesterday. But now we get a little bit more information. So we are getting a Havelcheck. He is an Amethyst. So I don't expect too much out of him. I think he'll be a really good Amethyst card And if you were to get him. Um, he would be really good. I just think he's going to be completely overpriced based solely on this NBA 75 thing. Like, he's going to be way too expensive based on that. And then we got Pink Diamond David Robinson, who's also part of the 75, which is going to increase his already astronomical price. If he can even shoot a three-pointer at a 77, yeah, we're in for trouble, dude. He's going to be, like, a massive problem. Like, he's going to be the best center in the game. Now, that being said, if you're someone like myself who has Dikembe Mutombo, it's not worth going to sell Dikembe Mutombo right now. Like, it, it's not worth it. I promise. David Robinson's going to be two to 300K. Um, is there a buyout Dikembe's? No. Good. He's going to be two to 300K. Now, one guy I would look at tonight is Isaiah Thomas. Pay attention to his price because we could see him falling to the 70 or 80K range. And the reason I say that is because we are getting a glitch diamond Trey Young who plays defense. I mean, the best way I can describe Trey Young and the Trey Young that we are getting basically is it's Chris Bosch with a good jump shot. Or Chris Bosch, I'm sorry. Chris Paul with a good jump shot. Basically, this Chris Paul card with a good jump shot is essentially what we're getting. I don't know why I had a Canadian accent for a second. That always happens when I get frazzled. Too much trailer park boys growing up, I think. But basically, we're getting Chris Paul with a good jump shot. He's going to be able to steal the ball like Chris Paul. He's going to play defense. He's probably going to be the best defensive center in the game. Yeah, I would say bar none. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, he's six foot. But like at this point, you can still run little point guards. Most most comp guys are running Steph Curry at this point. Steph Curry, 6'3". Like. And he doesn't look very big in game, so. Though Chris Paul looks tiny, though. Like, I will say that. He's still going to be incredibly good. And then we're obviously getting Clay Thompson as well. Who, <laughs> as far as I know, the Clay Thompson glitch is still in effect. Like, the Clay Thompson glitch is still a thing. Uh, please tell me that. Oh, he absolutely will. He will. T temporarily, Clay Thompson will be going for like four or 500K. Oh, wait, no, he's only a diamond. I, I was thinking he was a pink diamond. No, he'll probably go for right around 100K initially. And then he'll stay above 80 or 90K just being Clay Thompson because he can dribble. But he is going to switch on to the center every single time on current gen. <laughs> because as far as my knowledge goes, the uh, Clay Thompson glitch is still actually in the game. Which is, uh, I would like to say, very frustrating. And then we're still getting a couple other cards too, like uh, Ha Sung Jin, Eric Snow, who could be a glitch card. Um, glitched Eric Snow, obviously. 
I've talked about it. He looks really tight. I would be super stoked for glitched Eric Snow. If he can boom, that would be dope. Let's see. Who, who else was it? Glenn Rice. Oh, yeah. I forgot about Glenn Rice. Glenn Rice is also in the mix. I don't know what to expect from Glenn Rice, if I'm being completely honest. I, I truly don't know what he's going to be all about. His bird dribble video was incredibly cringe, but what are you going to do, man? All right. So let's look at the market overall, though. I mean, how down are cards going to be? I don't know. The market never really collapses like at this point. Like we had the market collapse due to alter ego packs, but Jamal Mashburn is 100K. That's so crazy. Like he's a buyout. Jamal Mashburn is going to be probably just as tight as the Clay Thompson we're getting tomorrow. I would guess. Mm, that might be a little off. Elgin Baylor's cheap too. I mean, a lot of cards go down in price. Is there anyone specifically you should invest in? Uh, not Rick Barry, I can tell you that. Mark Aguirre. He's an interesting card I'm going to keep my eyes on. If he gets too low, I might pick him up because he's actually really good. Please tell me Rick Barry has gone up in price so I can make a profit. That's a hard no. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I'm going to pick up Glenn Rice, too. I'm guessing he's going to be a Ruby or an Amethyst, which means I'm definitely going to pick him up. None of these cards are really worth picking up right now, to be honest. Like, they're not. DeAndre Aiden, I really thought they were going to give him another opportunity for an Evo, but they just said nah. One card to look at that's probably going to go down in price tonight is Drew Holiday. I mean, he's still 20K, though, basically, which is, like, absurd. He's very good, but he's not worth this price. I'm only keeping them because I like need Pelicans players because there's just none. And I know this card is going to come in clutch in like two months. You know what I mean? It's the only reason I'm keeping them. Other than that, it doesn't look like very many cards have gone down too much in price. The pack odds have been just so bad this year that cards don't really tank in value like they normally do because nobody's pulling half of these guys like... Like, there's not very many Jokic's. Not very many people locked in for Oscar Robertson, right? So there shouldn't be only this many Kobe's in theory. But the pack odds are horrendous, so it's not really incredibly shocking. I do. I just forget limited edition packs even existed. These were just not tight. No, yeah, he's just like... Uh, well, I mean, I like mid-grade. He is mid-grade. Like, he is very mid miles turner still solid all right this will be the real test how's my man <laughs> how much is doll shays going for still probably 400k let me check the non-mast version i still can't afford this guy my face is in the way but i only have 120,000 mt which like that should really tell you how bad the pack odds are <laughs> this year because like if you look at my main lineup, it's not very good. Like, I don't have any expensive cards in my main lineup. Like, Dikembe is the most expensive card I have, and I pull him from packs, right? So I haven't splurged and really spent any MT on the actual market. I've basically only used my MT on pack openings. And uh, I only have one original owner. Yeah, I have LaMarcus Aldridge, too, I guess. He was an original owner. But, like, I had to buy Jason Richardson... <laughs> I had to buy Rodman. Like, the Marcus Aldridge, I don't even like, dude. I just don't have anyone else to use. Like, Aiton. I'll probably use Aiton instead, though, honestly. Aiton is better. The Marcus Aldridge drives me nuts. 